Hello wanderers and history buffs, I am Navdeep, your guide to the world's most fascinating corners. Welcome to Travel the World, a channel dedicated to exploring the rich history and enchanting beauty of our planet's most iconic landmarks. Today, we embark on a grand tour of seven of the globe's most intriguing palaces, each a testament to the unique cultures that built them. Prepare for a journey through time and space as we delve into the stories of these magnificent structures. Our first stop is the Mysore Palace in India, a symbol of opulence and power. Nestled in the heart of the city of Mysore, this royal residence is a marvel of Indo-Saracenic architecture. Built in the late 19th century, the palace stands as a testament to the rich cultural heritage of the Wodeya dynasty. The three-storied stone structure with its deep pink marble domes is a sight to behold, but it's the intricate carvings, motifs and frescoes that truly set this palace apart. Step inside and you'll find a treasure trove of stunning art pieces, each with its own story to tell. From the magnificent peacock room with its vibrant stained glass ceiling, to the opulent Durbar Hall where the king held his court, each corner of the palace whispers tales of grandeur and splendor. While the Mysore Palace is known for its architectural brilliance, there are some lesser known facts that add to its allure. Did you know that the palace houses the largest collection of ivory artifacts in the world? Or that it's illuminated by nearly 100,000 bulbs every Sunday and on public holidays, casting an enchanting glow that can be seen from miles away? The grandeur of Mysore Palace truly embodies the rich cultural heritage of India. This architectural gem, steeped in history, and adorned with intricate artwork is a testament to India's royal past and a must visit for anyone seeking to experience the country's regal charm. Next, we find ourselves in Australia at the Regal Schönbrunn Palace. This grand edifice, nestled in the heart of Melbourne, is a remarkable testament to Australia's colonial past. It was built in the late 19th century, a time when Australia was under British rule. The palace's design draws heavily from European architectural styles particularly the Rococo style of the 18th century. One of the lesser known facts about Schönbrunn Palace is that it was originally constructed as a residence for a wealthy British merchant. However, it was later purchased by the Australian government and transformed into a museum, showcasing Australia's rich history and cultural diversity. The palace's architecture is a visual feast with its intricate designs and ornate decorations. The interior is just as impressive featuring stunning frescoes and lavish furnishings that hark back to a bygone era. Schönbrunn Palace is a testament to Australia's colonial past and architectural prowess. It serves as a magnificent reminder of the country's complex history and its enduring ties with Europe. Now we travel to Portugal where the Peña Palace stands as a vibrant beacon of history. Nestled atop the lush verdant hills of Sintra, this 19th century romanticist marvel captivates with a dazzling fusion of architectural styles. From its ornate Gothic towers to its vibrant Renaissance facades, every corner of Peña Palace tells a story of a time when Portugal was at the forefront of maritime exploration and cultural exchange. The palace's history is equally fascinating. Commissioned by King Ferdinand II, it was built on the ruins of a medieval monastery devastated by an earthquake in the mid-18th century. The king's vision was to create a palace that could serve as a summer residence for the royal family, embodying the romantic ideals of the time. Not to mention, the palace is surrounded by Penna Park, a vast forested area completely designed and created by the king himself. The park is home to over 500 different species of trees from the four corners of the earth. Pena Palace, with its vivid colors and Gothic architecture, embodies the romantic spirit of Portugal. Our journey takes us next to Sweden, home to the majestic Drottningholm Palace. Nestled on the island of Lovon, this splendid residence is the private home of the Swedish royal family. The palace's roots stretch back to the late 16th century, but its present form, an embodiment of the European Baroque architectural style, was largely established in the 17th century. The palace's theatre, with its original machinery still intact and operational, is a marvel to behold. The Chinese pavilion, a testament to the 18th century fascination with the Orient, stands as a unique addition to the palace grounds. And let's not forget the Immaculate Palace Gardens, a harmonious blend of the French formal and English landscape styles. 
A little known fact is that the palace is one of the best preserved royal palaces in Europe, giving us a unique insight into the life of a 17th century European royal court. Drottningholm Palace, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, is a shining example of royal Swedish living. From Sweden, we move to the vibrant country of Turkey, where the Topkapi Palace narrates tales of the Ottoman Empire. This magnificent palace, perched on the Seraglio Point, was the heart of the Ottoman rule for nearly four centuries. From the 15th to the 19th centuries, it served as the primary residence of the Ottoman Sultans, a stage for royal entertainments and a site of significant political decisions. The palace complex is an architectural marvel with its four main courtyards, the harem, and a labyrinth of buildings adorned with beautiful Iznik tiles. One of the lesser known facts about Topkapi is its treasury, which houses an array of precious artifacts, including the Spoonmaker's Diamond, one of the largest in the world. Stories of sultans, their families, and the palace staff who lived here echo in every corner, making Topkapi Palace a living testament to the grandeur of the Ottoman Empire. Topkapi Palace, with its rich history and stunning views of Istanbul, truly is a jewel of Turkey. Next, we find ourselves in the heart of France, at the world-renowned Palace of Versailles. This architectural marvel, spanning over 800 hectares, was the center of political power in France from 1789 until the French Revolution. With its grand halls, intricate designs, and lavish gardens, it served as a symbol of the absolute monarchy of the Ancien Regime. The Palace of Versailles is not just famous for its size and beauty, it's also home to an array of fascinating and lesser-known facts. Did you know that the palace's famous Hall of Mirrors was a technological feat during its time? The mirrors, a luxury item in the 17th century, reflected the light from the windows and chandeliers, creating a breathtaking spectacle. Another intriguing fact is the palace's hidden purpose. It was designed to keep the nobility under the king's control, making it both a royal residence and a prison of sorts. The Palace of Versailles, with its opulence and grandeur, is a symbol of absolute monarchy of the Ancien Regime. Finally, we arrive at the iconic Buckingham Palace in England, the residence of the British monarch. This grand edifice, with its stately facade, has been the official London residence of the UK's sovereigns since 1837 and is often at the centre of state occasions and royal hospitality. Now, let's delve into its history. The palace was originally known as Buckingham House, a large townhouse built for the Duke of Buckingham in 1703. It was later acquired by King George III in 1761 as a private residence for Queen Charlotte, earning it the title The Queen's House. The palace has a staggering 775 rooms, including 19 state rooms, 52 royal and guest bedrooms, and 78 bathrooms. Did you know that the palace also has its own post office, cinema, swimming pool, and even a doctor's surgery? Buckingham Palace, an emblem of the British monarchy, stands as a symbol of resilience and tradition. We've traveled far and wide, exploring the grandeur and history of seven majestic palaces. Let's take a moment to reflect on the remarkable journey we've just embarked upon together. Starting in the vibrant country of India, we marveled at the spectacular Mysore Palace, a magnificent symbol of the country's rich cultural heritage. Its opulent architecture and vibrant festivals are a testament to the grandeur of India's royal past. From there, we crossed continents to Australia, where we discovered the Schönbrunn Palace in all its grandeur. This palace, with its beautiful gardens and intricate design, is a splendid example of the architectural prowess of the bygone era. Next, we found ourselves in Portugal, captivated by the romantic Peña Palace. Nestled atop the Sintra Hills, its vibrant facades and ornate interiors embody the spirit of Portuguese royalty and offer unique insights into the country's past. Our journey continued to Sweden, where we explored the Drottningholm Palace, a marvel of Scandinavian architecture. This palace, with its beautifully manicured gardens and exquisite interiors, is a testament to Sweden's rich royal history. Then we marveled at the grandeur of the Topkapi Palace in Turkey. This palace, with its magnificent courtyards and impressive collections of artifacts, is a vibrant symbol of Turkey's imperial past. We then traveled to France, where we were awed by the splendor of the Palace of Versailles. This palace, with its grand gardens, ornate rooms and rich history, is a testament to the opulence of French royalty. Finally, we ended our journey in England at the iconic Buckingham Palace. 
This palace, a symbol of the British monarchy, captivates with its grand facade, regal interiors and historic significance. What a journey it has been! Seven palaces, seven countries and countless stories of history, culture and royalty. Each palace is a treasure trove of architectural beauty and historical significance, a testament to the grandeur of our world's past. Thank you for joining me, Navdeep, on this journey. Stay curious, stay adventurous and keep exploring with Travel the World. Until next time.